Greetings. In today's video I wanted to make a comparison between two homemade tremolo units. First is a Richtone tremo drive that I built several years ago uh, from a schematic that I downloaded uh, from the internet. And secondly an electromechanical tremolo that I designed and built from scratch uh, based on the general theory of the early D'Armond uh, liquid tremolos from the late 40s. And we'll play both of them through a, a 1960s uh, Magnetone Tone Master amplifier. So let's see uh, how they compare. First we'll take a look at the tube tremolo. Uh, I made this many years ago when I was just first getting started, so it's fairly crude. Uh, I learned a lot from it, which I guess is what these projects are all about. Single 12 AX7 that I had to mount horizontally because uh, of clearance problems. And a very unusual power supply. Let me shift over to the Richtone schematic here and show, uh, I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with this but to me it was a, a major discovery and to some other people this might be of great interest. Uh, but you use two small and very inexpensive transformers. I got these from Radio Shack. They're like six or eight dollars a piece. The first one takes the 120 volts AC and steps it down to 12.6. We use that 12.6 for our filament voltage for our 12AX7. Then we reverse the second transformer and take the 12.6 volts from the first and step it back up to the 120. We then use a voltage doubling uh, arrangement of diodes and end up with, uh, it says here 210, but I found more like 230 or 240 volts for your B+. Second is this little electromechanical tremolo that I designed and built about a year ago. Uh, the basis of it is this copper tank back here that is grounded through the chassis and through the third wire of the power cord and we have the uh, guitar signal coming in on this to this electrode. The electrode is suspended here by a plexiglass cap so it is insulated from the tank. When the tank shifts down and the water hits the electrode it grounds the signal and it does this in a rhythmic fashion as this wheel spins around so that we get a steady on off on off on off uh, signal effect that gives us the tremolo sound. Th this is all uh, covered very very thoroughly in a separate video on my companion site El Paso Tube Amps. I will put a link in the description of this video that will lead you to that if you'd like to see a really in-depth look at how this tremolo was designed and how it functions. First we'll listen to the tube tremolo in bypass mode to get an idea of what the straight guitar signal sounds like. Okay, now we'll listen to the tube tremolo at a medium depth. Now the tube tremolo at a much greater depth. Now the electromechanical tremolo in bypass. Okay. 
Okay, the electromechanical tremolo at a high speed. The electromechanical tremolo at a lower speed. The electromechanical tremolo at a very low speed. Now for a direct comparison, I'm going to do kind of a fast cut between the two. First will be the electromechanical. Well, that's it for the sound comparison of the two homemade tremolos. Uh, there's all sorts of pitfalls and shortcomings of any type of sound comparison done this way because, first of all, we're recording with the tiny little microphone in the camera and then uh, changing formats, uploading to YouTube, and then you're listening on uh, your computer speakers, which are probably not Morant's concert grands or anything. So uh, I just hope maybe with that direct quick cut comparison you could actually tell some difference between the two. Uh, to my ear it sounds like the electromechanical is a little warmer, not as deep, a little more organic and the tube tremolo had a little sharper cutoff, a little bit more almost metallic, um, but that was just me. Uh, you make up your own mind uh, and no matter what, I really appreciate your time and interest. I hope you will subscribe uh, to my channel and stay tuned for all sorts of uh, videos featuring uh, vintage guitar amplifiers and neat old gear and jukeboxes too from time to time. So thanks a lot.